It's time now to answer the age-old question. How soon before I'm screwing robots? That's right, today we've got a peep show into future sex. Joining me from San Francisco to help make sense of it all, sex writer, columnist, and blogger Violet Blue joins us. How are you, Violet? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing very well. So, so um, can you answer that question? I mean, how long before I am actually screwing a robot again? Or uh, uh, again? But, but, I mean, but, I mean, <laughs> ever, ever. Our, our, in general, our audience. How long before this actually becomes a reality? It can actually probably become a reality within a year. Um, I don't know if you've been following along at home with all the developments with artificial intelligence and people trying to put their robot girlfriends into robot bodies, but the progress is coming along pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, so you recently wrote about you know the future of sex for the San Francisco Chronicle, uh, and great. you say a, a year, a year's time. Are we talking like Demolition Man, where we're putting on like like headbands and not actually touching, <laughs> or are we? I mean, what is this future vision of sex that that we might see in a year? Well, if you're talking about robot girlfriends, um, well, right now, at this time, Virtual Carrie is the most popular robot girlfriend in the world, and there's a community developer forum that's got 8,000 members in it that is totally committed to making this girlfriend more and more realistic, from creating oh. adjustable sliders about her staying on topic to being able to monitor her compliance. Wow. Um, yeah. And I mean, I've, like, are... I've always wanted, like, a geek girlfriend, and I thought, like, a, a chick that Twitters <laughs> is cool, but I don't need my girlfriend to be open source, because it would take on... <laughs> An entirely new world at that point, but I, I guess like scientists are, where are they at creating a sex chip? Okay, because the, the robot girlfriend is one thing, but I hear that there's a sex chip that could be implanted into the brain. That's true. Actually, um, this, the, this chip actually has been in use to treat Parkinson's disease. But some researchers recently discovered that when it was, um, it, basically what the chip does is it stimulates the centers of the brain that have to do with pleasure functions, such as getting pleasure from eating. Um, and they found that in certain women, uh, when this chip was activated, it actually brought them to orgasm rather quickly. And one woman who had the chip implanted in her head actually asked to have the chip removed because it was a little too intense for her. She was uh, previously really? not very sexually active. Yeah. So it's actually that effective. And so now at Oxford, um, neurosurgery professor Tipo Aziz is saying that they're starting to actively do research in this area. So, but it's not just brain implants, actually. Um, there are also spinal cord implants that have had an incredible amount of success. Now, why uh, was, this, was this like an offshoot? Like someone was doing a, a spinal cord type surgery and found that, oh, this acts, actually stimulates that, that, that region of the brain as well? Or were they purposefully trying to tweak somebody's spine to induce orgasm? <laughs> They weren't, actually, at all. Um, Dr. Stuart Milo in North Carolina was experimenting with, uh, well, he's a, a, he's a pain, a professor of pain, mm -hmm. um, but he's a professor of getting rid of pain, specifically for women, um, for women who've had back injuries and things like that. And so what he was playing around with was using uh, electrodes and implants that go into the base of the spine and deliver small electrical shocks to help bring the, the pain down for women who are mm -hmm. having pain. And he had one patient who was um, in, behind the curtain, and suddenly he heard a lot of commotion and a lot of heavy breathing and a sigh. And he sort of peeked around the corner and said, are you okay? And she said, uh, you got to show my husband how to do that. <laughs> and so after that, what he started doing was using it to treat sexual dysfunction in women. And he had success in 10 out of 11 of his patients. And so basically what it is is it's, it's an implant that goes in the body. It's operated via remote control. Of course it is. Uh, and he's, yeah, isn't that fantastic? Orgasms with a button. He is actually calling it the Orgasmatron, which I think is kind of hokey but cool. Um, and he's trying to get it FCC approved. And the estimated cost of such an implant would be around $17,000. And there's probably about 17,000 women lined up to beta test that product right now, <laughs> I'm assuming, right? Yeah, ready, ready to trade in their cars. Yeah. yeah. Uh, very quickly, Violet, <laughs> I, I want to know about sex in space because it's, uh, it's something mm -hmm. man has dreamed of since we first planted a pole in the moon. Um, it's the next logical no step, intended. I suppose. Um, how long before we hit the thousand mile high club and actually have some sex in space? Well, in over 50 years of space exploration, no international space organization has copped to anyone actually having sex in right. space. However, uh, Mike Mullane, who logged over 300 hours as a shuttle astronaut, in his book, Riding Rockets, talked about um, extremely painful morning wood that he would have. So you've got to think that someone somewhere has done it. Now, we're not going to hear anything about it from NASA. We're not going to hear anything about it from international space organizations. So what we need to do is look at the private sector. And Virgin Galactic, I think, is our greatest hope. They're starting their first 50 test flights this year. And they're not denying the fact that people are interested in having sex in space and are booking flights with the interest of 
of actually having their honeymoons in space, if you will. However, there are some practicalities involved if you're going to have sex um, or think about even having sex on a Virgin Galactic flight. First of all, you go up and you come down. So we're not talking foreplay. We're not talking wine and roses. Right. Also, it's a six-person flight, so it's cool if you're an exhibitionist. Um, and then Go so on. No so privacy. far, I'm two for three. Let's go. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, I don't know if you'll be cool with the third. Well, maybe you will, actually. Um, then you would need to try the dolphin technique. And essentially what it is is that dolphins uh, occasionally mate in, in triads, in trios. Right. And the idea behind that is that because they're floating in water, it's so that one dolphin can sort of like help the other dolphin prevent uh, dolphinus interruptus got it, got by it. floating away. Right. So you would need you We need, need somebody to, to hold us down technique. or we need a zero-G Chinese <laughs> basket or some, some sort of design there, but I get it. I, I, I can do tiger and friend. I can do crane. I'll learn dolphin style. That's fine. If it's going to get me <laughs> up there, I'm not worried. <laughs> Violet, it, it's an awesome topic and I hope to have you back on soon to discuss it uh, further, but thank Likewise. you for joining us today. Thanks for keeping us thank in the you. loop.